Hello and welcome to today's presentation. This time we're going to shed some light on electromagnetic radiation. Even if you haven't heard this term before, you are already familiar with this phenomenon. EM radiation can be seen anytime the sun is up and anytime you look at a computer screen or a lamp. It can be felt on a hot day or when you cook your food. It can even be heard when converted by a radio or a TV set. This kind of radiation is all around us, streaming across the Earth and beyond, racing through the vacuum of space. Let's start exploring it by looking at its most familiar variety. All the light we can see is EM radiation. It comes in different colours and can be created by different sources, but all light is fundamentally the same. It can be characterised using three measurable properties, speed, frequency, and wavelength. The speed of light is very fast indeed. It's actually the fastest thing in the universe, as shown by a chap named Einstein. It travels at 300 million meters per second. For comparison, a bullet flies at 1200 meters per second, and a meteor entering Earth's atmosphere falls at 20,000 meters per second. The frequency of light determines its color. Red light is said to have a low frequency compared to blue or violet light. This property is also linked to the amount of energy carried by a beam of light. Low frequency equates to low energy content, whereas a high frequency means high energy. We can therefore say that a given amount of red light carries less energy than the same amount of blue light. Frequency is measured in hertz, which are given the symbol HZ. Wavelength, measured in meters, is a strange property to apply to light, but light itself is a strange thing, and it can be accurately described like a wave. Right now we don't need to worry about what the wavelength actually means, we just need to know that it's linked to both speed and frequency. It is actually inversely proportional to frequency. When one goes up, the other goes down. This is shown by a neat little equation that describes all types of EM radiation. Speed equals frequency times wavelength. The speed of visible light is constant, so to change the frequency of light you can only change its wavelength, and it has to change in the opposite manner. Using that equation we can vary frequency and wavelength to reach the invisible parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. There are other types of radiation on both sides of the visible light spectrum. The only fundamental differences between these types are differences in frequency and wavelength. Let's try decreasing the frequency of the radiation we observe and see what happens. We leave behind red light, the lowest frequency type of visible light, and enter the realm of infrared. Although humans cannot see infrared radiation, we can feel it. It exists in the right frequency range to stimulate atoms and heat them up. This is what we perceive as the warmth of the sun. In fact, any hot object can give off infrared radiation, including your body. Thermal cameras and night vision goggles are designed to detect it, letting the user see even in the middle of the night. Next to infrared we have the microwave range. As you may guess, microwaves are used in microwave ovens. They exist in the right frequency range to be absorbed by water, making the water and anything around it very hot indeed. It's by this method that microwave ovens work. They heat up whatever water is inside the food, and that cooks it efficiently from the inside. Microwaves have other uses beyond baking your brownies. Believe it or not, they are helpful in long-range communication. Just as visible light travels in beams and can be reflected off objects, it's the same for microwaves. Perhaps there is a satellite dish on the roof of your house that provides the TV with content. Have you ever wondered how TV shows are transmitted from a satellite to that dish? It's through a microwave beam. This kind of beam can be sent in the other direction as well, from large dishes on Earth out into space. The moon and rocky planets have been scanned using microwaves. The reflections of those microwaves have told us how far away these bodies are and even given us images of their surfaces. When it comes to communication across Earth's surface, 
you still can't beat radio. We find radio waves at the low frequency end of the EM spectrum. Conversely, they have very long wavelengths, meters to kilometers long. Radiation with a long wavelength tends to bend around obstacles, such as hills, and it is not easily absorbed by the environment. This means that radio waves can travel great distances through or over objects and reach their destination without losing much energy. They are ideal for transmitting information around the globe, not just into space and back. Information can include audio, video, and digital channels for all your listening, watching, and learning needs. We can now shift to the other half of the spectrum, where the frequency of radiation is higher than visible light. As a reminder, frequency is directly linked to energy content, so these forms of radiation will get progressively more energetic. First we encounter ultraviolet, which exists beyond violet light. It is invisible to most humans, but can be seen by some birds and insects. Because it is more energetic than visible light, it can actually cause damage to living cells. This is why you should wear sunscreen on beach days. It blocks ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Of course, the Earth's atmosphere blocks some of it as well, but you can't be too careful. Beyond ultraviolet, we enter the part of the spectrum where things get really strange. Have you ever had your X-ray taken? It's done using high-frequency EM radiation. In this section of the spectrum, radiation can pass through soft materials like skin and muscle, but is blocked by dense materials such as bone. X-rays were officially discovered in 1895, and within one month they were being used by doctors to make images of broken bones. They are also used to see inside non-living things, like your luggage at the airport. Unfortunately, they can damage living cells in a similar way to ultraviolet rays. This is why medical scans using them are quick, and why patients have to wear pieces of lead to shield their vital areas. The final type of EM radiation is positively frightening. It's produced not only by stars, but also by nuclear explosions and radioactive metals. Gamma rays are so energetic they can cause burns and DNA mutations in living things. They can also pass through most materials without losing any energy. It takes a lot of lead to make an effective gamma shield. Luckily, the Earth's atmosphere is enough to protect us from gamma rays produced by the sun. Furthermore, modern laws surrounding the use of nuclear power plants and weapons ensure that most of us will never encounter this type of radiation. Only astronauts have to worry about it from day to day, because just like everything on the spectrum, it travels through space at 300 million meters per second. Here is the full electromagnetic spectrum, from low frequency to high frequency. As I have hopefully convinced you, this spectrum is responsible for many interesting phenomena, and understanding it is vital for modern science. If you have any questions or would like more videos on this topic, please let me know in the comment section below. I would also appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel to show your support. Thanks very much for watching and best of luck with your studies!